Hey guys, I'm Sean from Scott Studio. So today I'm going to show you guys my character modeling workflow. So before all that, I'd like to say my videos can get a little bit weird. You can hear chickens screaming in the background and my neighbors barking. Uh, I mean my neighbors dogs barking. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm dealing with right now. So hopefully in the future, I'll be able to increase the quality of the videos a bit more. I'm planning to do a few live streams and a few character modeling tutorials in these couple of weeks. So make sure you guys subscribe for that so these characters i'm modeling these days are for a personal project of mine and um, i'm announcing it today in public and um, it's a movie yeah it's a movie so yeah guys i'm gonna do a movie so hopefully i might be able to finish it by december so that's the plan and um, i've modeled a few characters already and uh, running some tests on the rig these days and i'm hoping to finish as much as i can by december so hopefully guys check uh, you guys can check it out so make sure you guys subscribe and uh, until then you guys can check my videos on progression of the film and uh, you guys can also check one of my short films uh, which i've done in the past uh, i i started working on it on 2016 and i finished it in 2018 because i didn't have a lot of time i had college and a lot of work while while I was doing that so it was a bit of a hassle so it took me a lot of time to finish that one a lot of my skills have actually improved since then so I'm sure I can do a better job this time so when it comes to character modeling the typical workflow for creating a stylistic character can take a very long time with a lot of different people involved in the process from concept artists sculptors to the guys who do the cloth the hair the rigs and so many more uh, the full character modeling workflow is typically something that looks like this. This is what a typical animation studio would use like you know Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, the big boys. So yeah and this is only the process for character modeling and when you're working on a film there's a lot more stuff going on that you need to think about like environments and props, lighting and so on. But in my case, I work alone and I can only afford two days or less for a character which would normally take like two or three weeks in a big studio even when they have a lot of different people working on the same character itself. But there's a lot of decision making involved in that process which is one of the reasons that it takes so much time too. So you might ask but how and why isn't that cheating when I'm creating a character in two days? Well. Yeah, it's kind of cheating, but time is a luxury we don't really have, at least I don't have, so I have to rely on my method because if I'm not working for a client, most of the time I'm happy with the characters I create so I can move to the next level pretty quickly. There are times that I don't really ignore sculpting because it's a very good method to cre create organic shapes and my sculpting is pretty okay, well, I mean... I'm not as good as Julian Casper, but uh, he's a legend of course, but it's adequate enough to create a decent character. It's just that I can't afford to do it right now. Sometimes uh, especially in my movie that I'm working on right now. So the method I use for character modeling is called polymodeling. The main difference between polymodeling and sculpting is when you are sculpting, you are separating out the design phase and the topology phase. So first you are making sure the design is right and you make sure the shapes are exactly the way they should be in the concept art or what you have in mind then later you make sure the poly is in the exact same spot in polymodeling you're doing this at the same time that's why i'm heavily relying on the concept art to get my shapes and loops right when i'm uh, polymodeling my characters people usually use this method for hard surface modeling like modeling cars and when you have a tight blueprint it's very good to use polymodeling you can block out shapes polygons and you can really refine the shape which was the method that 3d modelers actually used before 3d sculpting software were ever created a lot of software engineers and people who don't come from a very artistic background use polymodeling as still so it's not exactly a bad way to create our characters as the very first thing, uh, it's important to know what the character should be. So for this movie I'm kind of working on, I don't want my characters to look super realistic or too cartoony either. So I'm going for a more mix between the both 
this way i can send the message i want to send to my audience without making it feel uh, very cheesy and also i'm trying my best to have an idea about the characters i'm creating who they are what they're supposed to be their personality traits occupation uh, attitude age and everything that is the in the script i try to incorporate it into the character and then i get into my research i use artstation and pinterest mostly and even instagram sometimes do my research and um, sometimes i look for some of my favorite actors and try to incorporate some of their features into my characters as well and um, then i download it all into pure ref which is my favorite tool for displaying references and open it up in a second monitor when i'm designing or drawing my characters Back when I was starting out in 2015, I used to have a pencil and a paper to come up with my initial character designs. Now I use Photoshop and a very old uh, Wacom tablet. It is always important for me to have an idea concept before I go into the character modeling stage. Mainly because I use the concept art I make in Photoshop as a background reference and I create my characters on top of the reference image as a front view and a side view. And if you're sculpting, you can just have it as a reference, but it is always better to have a concept before sculpting as well. Or you can make different changes and save the characters and pick what's best for you later on. But I prefer, actually, when you're polymodeling, it's important to have a concept art always. So if you're getting into character modeling, this could be the easiest way to start. It may take some practice to creating really good looking characters, but trust me guys, it's not that hard. But keep practicing. If you guys see my older models, they look really bad as well. But if you take some time and patience, you guys can get better at it. So when I'm polymodeling my characters, I always try to work with cards. That's the key to a perfect mesh. There might be instances where a triangle or a pentagon might have to be used, but try your very best to avoid them. And uh, also, when I'm modeling ears, I usually model them separately and join them once they're done. It makes me it makes it much easier for me to focus on it uh, more. And also, when it comes to modeling the body of a character, I usually use an A pose because it gives me a better deformation for my characters. There are occasions that I use a T pose as well. A T pose is great for rigging and animation. Most of my characters usually make a lot of exaggerated poses because they are stylized characters. But I like to have a balance between realism as well in an, uh, in my animation style. So I usually go for an A pose. And most of the time, I model the teeth, the hands, and the feet separately. Even sometimes the ears, and save them in a different file and use them so that I don't have to remodel them because that's the most time consuming job when it comes to character modeling but uh, this can change when we have a different uh, dif when we have different styles of characters so there are times that I model the whole character as well but for more background characters I might model only the head and try to use a body that I have already modeled and sculpt or sculpted, reshape them a bit with the uh, sculpting and um, fit them into the model and join the two meshes together when I'm creating background characters. So that's mainly it you guys. Uh, I hope you learned something from this video and this is my personal preference and the methods I use for creating characters for my own movie which is modeled and animated by me so it's a lot of work and I try my best to find all the shortcuts I can while making the outcome look as professional as possible. But when it comes to main characters it's better if you can go through the whole process starting with sculpting. And I'm planning to do some character modeling live streams and tutorials in the weeks to come so make sure you guys subscribe to the channel for that and I have a bunch of cool animation loops that you guys might be interested in so if you guys want to learn how to make this animation loop you can click here and if you want to create something like this you can click here so thank you guys for watching this tutorial if you liked it leave a comment and subscribe to the channel thank you guys see you in the next one peace